Did you know your rounded shoulders is a huge factor when it comes to your chronic pain like thoracic alice syndrome, shoulder impingement, and even migraines? That's why today you're not only gonna learn how your pain is connected to your posture, backed by some research, you're also gonna learn a brand new treatment plan for fixing your rounded shoulders. And no, it's not just exercises. And I'm here from trainingmassage.com. Now we're gonna be getting into this brand new treatment plan in a little bit. But first, you need to understand what's happening in the shoulder and how it contributes to your pain. When you have rounded shoulders, the head of the humerus, which is the ball, is moved forward and down on the glenoid fossa, which is the socket. This in turn is going to force the scapula to follow with it by moving up and forward on the rib cage. Now this is going to naturally happen because we are constantly using these muscles in the front of the body more than the back. But just because it's a natural thing happening doesn't mean we shouldn't be addressing it. Because when that shoulder moves to the front of the joint, you can easily end up with something like shoulder impingement. Now shoulder impingement is basically when there's compression on the inside of the joint from the shoulder being out of position. And you're gonna feel this shoulder impingement mainly when you try to raise your arm in the air. Now just like rounded shoulders, when you have shoulder impingement, you will have limited range of motion when it comes to certain shoulder movements. And it's mainly because both of these conditions force the shoulder to have limited external rotation, which can then create a kink and some kind of pain in the shoulder when you raise your arm. And of course, I'm not just talking out of my ass here. There are plenty of studies that show some kind of relationship between rounded shoulders and shoulder impingement. Like this one study that shows an association, but not causation between rounded shoulders and shoulder impingement. Or this one that shows working on your kyphosis with a combination of therapies, like we'll get to later on, can improve both kyphosis and shoulder impingement. So basically by working on your rounded shoulders, you will also naturally work on a lot of the problems associated with your shoulder impingement. And if you still don't believe me, just look at the exercises that's recommended for both of these and you'll notice a very similar pattern. Both problems are solved with exercises for training the upper back, rear delt, rotator cuff muscles, and even stretching the pec minor. But this actually brings me to another problem that most people are actually missing. It's the simple fact that it's not the weak muscles in the back at fault here for your bad posture. It's actually the muscles that shorten and in the front of the body that's creating your rounded shoulders. Muscles like the pec major, the pec minor, the anterior deltoids, the lats, and even some of those rotator cuff muscles is all part of the same movement pattern that creates rounded shoulders, which is rotating the shoulders inward. And it is this specific movement that we are doing every single day, which is why the muscles and the fascia in the front of the body begin to shorten and tighten, creating your rounded shoulders. And it's this shortening and tightening of the muscles in the front of the body that also can create things like thoracic aldus syndrome. Thoracic aldus syndrome is when there is compression on the nerves and blood vessels in the shoulder pocket, which is known as the thoracic outlet. And one of the main perpetrators for thoracic aldus syndrome in the front of the body is the pec minor. Now when this muscle becomes shorn, not only will it compress on the blood vessels and the nerves that run right underneath it, it will also pull your scapula forward, which can contribute to your shoulder impingement. In fact, there are other studies that show not only working on the pec minor, but also the fascia in the chest helped improve rounded shoulders. On top of that, we have these other studies that show an improvement in thoracic outlet syndrome by stretching the pec minor. And this one that shows a connection between the compression on the nerves and the pec minor as well. So here we can see that by working on the pec minor, we can not only improve our rounded shoulders, we can also improve our thoracic outlet syndrome. On top of that, you also have this one review that shows great improvements in thoracic outlet syndrome simply by following a simple program that releases these tight muscles. If you want to check that program out, it's going to be in the description. Now we do have one more type of pain that can also be created by your rounded shoulders, and that is migraines. And to be fair, migraines is created more through a forward head posture, but since rounded shoulders create a tilt in the shoulders, the cervical spine is going to follow it, which then creates a forward head posture. Now the way your forward head posture and rounded shoulders is creating migraines is by creating continuous tension through the sternocleidomastoid, which is the long neck muscle that pops out when you rotate your head. And what ends up happening here is that the muscles will shorten and tighten, 
which will then pull on the rest of the head, creating tension headaches and migraines. Plus, we also have these other studies that show this, like this first one that shows forward head posture can create headaches, or this one that shows a relationship between mild faster trigger points, your posture, and headaches. So now that you have some idea on how your pain is related to your posture, let me show you a brand new treatment for fixing your rounded shoulders. This method involves working on the body as a whole through the fascia system instead of individual muscles one at a time. And the cool part is because we are working on these fascia lines, we're also naturally gonna be working on the muscles we need to as well. On top of that, there are a few studies out there that's being ignored showing a relationship between your posture and the fascia system. Like this one that shows releasing the fascia in the pec region helps improve rounded shoulders and it only took four minutes. Or this one that shows manual treatment to the pec minor helped improve rounded shoulders up to two weeks after a single treatment. And then we also have this study that shows a fascia connection to the upper cross syndrome pattern. So hopefully by now you're thinking about your posture in a different light, which means you're about ready to start this brand new treatment plan. Before that, let's do some quick assessments for your rounded shoulders. And yes, you can use static images with your arms down for your before and after. And make sure you do it this way because some of you posting your posture pictures on Reddit, absolutely terrible. But if you don't wanna use a static image, here's another method you can try. What you're going to do is find the end of your clavicle right where that little ridge is in the bone and mark it with a non-permanent marker and do this to both sides. Now set up your phone on the floor so that you are recording yourself on the ground. Come here, lay on your back with your head in the middle of the phone so that the top of the shoulders is facing the camera and stay there for a few seconds so you can take a screenshot later. Now make sure to have a line on the floor or something for you to track against because we're gonna be using this to measure the dot on your shoulder to the line on the floor to get a starting number for your rounded shoulders. Future Adam here. Now while I was looking at that first image for my rounded shoulders, I noticed that my left side was way rounded, way more rounded than my right side. And that makes sense because I'm left-handed. But because of that, that means I'm only going to be working on the left side specifically during this entire treatment. So make sure to stick around until the end to see the result for my left shoulder. Now this next assessment is going to be a shoulder raise, which is perfect for anybody who has a shoulder impingement and thoracic outlet syndrome. Simply raise your arm in front of you as high as you can without discomfort or pain. If you're able to get it up in the air, then hold it there for one minute. If you feel pain while holding it up there, then that's a positive test for a tight pec minor and it could be creating your thoracic outlet syndrome. Now, if you can't get your arm up all the way because of pain or discomfort, then that's also a positive test or limited range of motion, which is common for shoulder impingement. Now let's get started with this plan, which actually comes from my brand new in-person treatment called manual and movement therapy, which is broken up into four different stages, starting with the release stage. The first fascia line we are gonna be releasing here is going to be the arm lines. These fascia lines start on the chest, go into the shoulder and then into the arms. And when we overuse this fascia line and the muscles inside of it, the shoulders will begin to round forward because all that tension is going towards the center near that sternum. Now within the front arm line, you technically have two arm lines. You have the superficial and the deep front arm lines. And to work on your rounded shoulders, we need to address both. We are gonna be starting things off by warming up the pec major with a foam roller. Start things off by putting the foam roller as close to the sternum as you can. Now from here, apply some pressure to the point you're able to sink into the muscle and then slowly move across the muscle toward the shoulder and then back. Do this for three minutes. It will feel like a long time, but trust me when I say this, you most likely need it. And if you're someone who has some extra fat tissue on top, then simply use your hands to move it away so you can work on the underlying muscle. Now from here, take a smaller ball or use the edge of the foam roller and place it into the top of the chest right next to the shoulder. This is where the pec minor is located. Now from here, perform some static pressure on this one spot to help the muscle and the fascia around it relax. Do this for three minutes. Now sticking to that same spot, perform a pin and stretch by keeping that muscle pinned down and then taking your arm through its full ranges of motion. This is going to help strip the fascia on top of the muscle. Do this for another two minutes. And of course, don't forget the other side. 
supplies to all the muscles. Next up, we are going to be working on the anterior deltoids. Take your arm and place it behind your back to help the shoulder pop out a little bit. If you're not comfortable leaving your arm there, then simply leave it to the side of the body. Now place the small ball under your shoulder and simply hold static pressure there for three minutes, taking in deep breaths to help the nervous system relax as well. Once your time is up, stay on that one muscle and perform micro movements by moving back and forth and side to side for one minute. This is going to help loosen up anything under there. Now perform another pin and stretch for one minute, making sure to take the arm through its full ranges of motion. And if you feel stuck in any specific direction, then try to work on that one area specifically. You might be surprised by how much you can open up that shoulder. Now roll to your side, grab your foam roller and place it under your armpit to target the lat. Look for the most tender spot and perform some static pressure for three minutes. Just avoid pressing directly on the ribs. After that, stay on that one muscle and perform some micro movements by moving back and forth and side to side for one minute. And then finish that muscle off by performing another pin and stretch for one minute. Make sure to take that arm through its full ranges of motion. Now besides the front arm line, there's another fascia line that contributes to your rounded shoulders and forward head posture. And that one fascia line is the superficial front line. This line runs from the top of the toes to the anterior tibularis. From there, it goes into the quads, up the stomach, through the sternum, and then into the sternocleidomastoid. Now, for everyone who has rounded shoulders, we are going to be focusing specifically on the stomach and up. The first area we want to work on is going to be the stomach. And as you can guess, not many people are going to work on your stomach, which means it may be a little tender. And if you're someone who has stomach issues, then please speak to your doctor before doing anything like this. I don't know what's going on underneath there specifically for your situation. To get started, lay on your back with your knees bent and your feet planted. From here, use your hands to push and pull your stomach side to side to help get the tissues moving. You can push in a little bit to get some more depth, but for the most part, think of it as a warm up. Do this for two minutes. Now from here, use your hands and fingers to help open up the hips by pressing into the stomach right next to the pelvis and then pulling away from it. The idea here is that you're helping to loosen the tissues between the stomach and the hips. Do this for another two minutes. Now roll over onto your stomach and place the edge of the foam roller under one side of your stomach. Do not roll on the entire stomach. We are only working one side at a time. What you're doing here is slowly letting your stomach sink into the foam roller as you perform some deep breaths with your stomach. As you do this, you're going to begin feeling the tissues open up a little bit as if they're spreading apart. Go ahead and relax in this position for another two minutes. Next on the list of muscles is the sternocleidomastoid, also known as the SCM. To work on this muscle, start off by finding the most tender spot within the neck and then grabbing onto it while holding static pressure. You may feel pain or tenderness in other areas of the body, but if you keep holding on to it, then chances are that pain is going to begin to dissipate. Hold static pressure for two minutes. Now help open up the tissues by pulling on the muscle as you slowly rotate your head away. Do this continuously up and down the muscle for another two minutes. You can also tilt your head to the side instead of rotating it to help strip and pull the tissues away. Speaking of laterally tilting your head, another muscle we can work on here is going to be the scalenes which can also contribute to your thoracic outlet syndrome. To work on this muscle, start by applying some static pressure to the muscle for two minutes. You're not pressing directly into the neck here. Instead, you are pressing into the neck just enough to grasp some tissues, and then you're going to apply some pressure towards the back of the head. And once you're done with static pressure, you're then going to perform some stripping on the muscle. Tilt your head towards the shoulder with your fingers at the bottom of the muscle. Now slowly tilt your head to the opposite side as you push up the muscle to help loosen it up. Do this for another two minutes. Now there's one more spot you're going to release and that is the muscles in the back of the head. But this is not part of the superficial front line, it's actually part of the superficial back line. And the reason why the top of this superficial back line will get tight is because when you have rounded shoulders, your shoulders are basically going to tilt forward, which then forces your head to go down with it as well. Well, in order to look straight, we need to pop our head up, which means we need to shorten the muscles and the fascia in the back of the head. 
Now the muscles in this area is called the suboccipital muscles, which is a group of small muscles that help control the head. To work on this area, place a small ball behind the back of the head, starting off with some static pressure for two minutes. Once you're done with static pressure, the next step is going to perform some micro movements for another two minutes, making sure to work on the most tender spot. So now we just release all the muscles and the fascia around it, but we are not done yet because the next step is to restore the tissues back to the original length as much as we can basically. And we're gonna be doing this by using some stretching and mobility drills. To stretch the pec major, use a wall as a block and place your elbow up on the wall or a corner of the house. Now from here, simply lean forward to begin stretching the pec major. Make sure to hold each stretch while taking in deep breaths for three to four minutes. We're stretching out every muscle for roughly three to four minutes because not only do we need the muscles to stretch out, we also need the fascia to respond to the stretch as well. Now to stretch the pec minor, keep your arm out there, but now raise it up as high as you can to put the pec minor onto a slight stretch. If this isn't feasible for some of you, then you can do a better stretch by placing your arm to your side, locking in your elbow, and then pivoting on your shoulder to get the pec minor on a stretch. Whichever stretch you want to do, stretch it out for another two minutes. Next up is the anterior deltoids. And to stretch this muscle out, we need to put the shoulders into extension and external rotation. And we can do this by placing your arm up on an elevated surface behind your back and then slowly dropping your knees until you feel a stretch in the shoulders. If you begin to feel a stretch more in the biceps, then simply bend the elbows a little bit to put a stronger focus on the anterior deltoid. Once again, hold the stretch for three to four minutes. Now turn around and place your arms up on that same elevated surface to stretch the lats. Once your arms are up there, you can then drop your head between your shoulders and push your butt back to begin stretching out the lats. You can even increase the stretch even more by simply externally rotating the shoulders as you stretch them out. And you can even stretch one muscle at a time by dropping one arm and then rotating under the other arm that's still elevated. This will help get you a deeper stretch in the lats. Once again, hold it for three to four minutes. Next up is the stomach. And we're gonna be stretching this out by performing a back bend on some pillows or a yoga cushion. Try to relax and focus on feeling the stretch in the stomach as you take in big deep breaths. You can even increase the stretch by stretching out your arms and legs to increase the levers here. Hold this stretch for three to four minutes. Now, if you're worried about blood rushing to your head, then you can also perform a cobra here to help stretch out the stomach. Just make sure the stomach is the one bending by planting the hips on the floor and the hips are not leaving the floor themselves. Moving up to the neck muscles, we're gonna be stretching both the SCM and the scalings together at the same time. And to do this, simply drop your ear to your shoulder to begin stretching the muscles on the opposite side. To increase the stretch, take your arm and place it on top of your head as you gently pull it down towards the ear. Hold the stretch for three to four minutes. Next up is the suboccipitals. Place a yoga block behind your head just above the skull as you lay on the floor. Now from here, perform a chin tuck to elongate the back of the neck to gently stretch the suboccipitals. This isn't going to be a strong stretch, but if you're tight back there, then you will definitely feel a little something. Make sure to stretch this muscle out for another three to four minutes. Now, another way to restore the tissues is to not just work on stretching, but to also work on the joints themselves with some mobility drills. The first mobility technique is designed to help reset your shoulder joint, which is perfect for anyone with shoulder impingement. Start off by laying on your back with a heavy weight in your hand and your arm straight. Now, being careful, gently externally rotate the arm as you pull the shoulder back. This is going to help gently push that shoulder back into its place. Continue to do this for another one to two minutes. Next up, we're gonna be working on the thoracic spine. And the way we're gonna be doing this is by performing a T-spine extension on the foam roller. Lay on your back with your knees bent and your feet planted. Now, from here, place the foam roller behind your upper back with your arms behind your head. Now, slowly bend backwards on the roller, hold it for a few seconds, and then return back to the starting position. While in the down phase of this mobility drill, you can also perform some small rotations and even lateral flexions to help open up the spine a little more. Do this for another one to two minutes. 
Now to help with some rotation for the neck, we're gonna be doing another mobility drill using a towel. Wrap a towel around the neck while also grabbing both ends in your hand. Now from here, gently pull on the towel to grab onto the back of the spine. Now while you have traction on that spine, pull on one side of the towel as you rotate your head to the other side. This is gonna help open up the joints in the neck a little easier. Return back to your starting position and then repeat on the other side. Keep going back and forth for another one to two minutes. So now that the fascia line and the muscles in the front of the body is released, you can go back to doing those exercises your doctor most likely gave you, which is part of our retrain phase. And the first exercise you wanna start with is going to be shoulder external rotation using a mini band. Place the band between your hands with your palms facing up and your elbows in front of the body. Now pull the band apart, hold it for one to two seconds, and then let the band slowly return back to the starting position. The idea here is that by keeping your elbows in front of the body, we are going to be disengaging the posterior delt, but we're still able to keep the infraspinatus, the rear rotator cuffs engaged as well as we do those movements. Now repeat this for 60 reps, taking as many breaks as you need. Now keep that band exactly where it is, but now extend the arms while keeping your shoulders down and back. From here, start the exercise by engaging your rhomboids and then pulling the scapula inwards towards the spine, which in turn will pull the arms apart along with the band. Now make sure to hold the contraction for one to two seconds before you slowly let your arms return and then repeat for another 60 seconds. Of course, you can also use a regular pull-up band if you got one. Now we're gonna move into firing up the lower trap. To get things started, hook a pull-up band to a high anchor while holding onto both ends with your hands. Slowly bring both of your arms down to the side by pulling the scapula down and back, similar to how you were working the rhomboids. Make sure to hold each contraction for one to two seconds before you slowly let your arm return and then repeat for another 60 seconds. Now let's fire up the deep cervical flexors by taking whichever band you want and wrapping one end around your head while holding on to the other side. Now place your hands up against the wall high enough so the band is now parallel with the floor. From here, pull the band into the wall to create some tension while also letting your hand get pulled into a forward head posture. Also make sure to keep your shoulders down and back. This is gonna be your starting position. Now slowly pull the band back with your head by performing chin tucks. Make sure to slightly drop the chin so we are not only contracting the deep cervical flexors, but so we can also put the back of the head on a slight stretch as well. Hold each contraction for one and two seconds before you slowly let your head return back to a forward head posture and then repeat for another 60 reps. And once all the single muscles are fired up, let's now train everything together as a single unit. This is the final stage called rebuild. Using a band or a cable, what you're gonna do is perform a single arm row while also stepping back with the opposite side leg to perform a reverse lunge. Training both the back and the leg is going to help strengthen the entire posterior chain and fascia line instead of just one at a time. Perform this exercise for three sets for 12 to 20 reps each leg. Now that you're done with your treatment plan, it's time to perform a reassessment. Go through each assessment and then let me know in the comments what your results were. Now, if you feel like this is a treatment that works for you, then you need to check out my brand new program coming out in a few months called Rounded Shoulders Rehab. This is a 16 week program that's gonna help you fix your rounded shoulders forward head posture, and all of the pain that comes with it. If you wanna learn more about that and get an early bird discount, then make sure to click on the link in the description below. Now I know this is a long treatment plan, but you can definitely break it up into two different days. Just focus on doing this one to two times a week for a few weeks, and you will see a change in your posture, mobility, and quality of life.